Dante Whitner went on uh, K Adams show. Up in Adams? Is that what it's called? Yeah. That's a clever name. Yeah. I like Very it. clever. Okay, so Debo went on that show. No, Dante Whitner went on this show. And just kind of unprompted. Maybe he was trying to make K Adams smile, blush. Maybe he thought he was being really charming or witty. I don't understand. But he started talking, making excuses. Say that the Niners lost to the Chiefs and the refs and Taylor Swift. A trifecta. Three against one in the Super Bowl. Fair or foul? Isn't, isn't Dante Whitner a part of like the NBC Sports deal over there? So yeah. he's kind of he's kind of a part of the team, right? He's an extension kind of the of. team a little bit. Yeah. Kind of, in, in a roundabout way. Yeah, it's definitely foul. This is definitely foul. First of all, he's already pissed off Chris Jones. Jones has responded and been like, y'all are full of excuses. Mm -hmm. So that there's that. You've already got a team that has owned you, and now it's like, oh, now you've given them the extra motivation just in case you see them again in the Super Bowl so they can beat you a third time to really prove it. That's great. And Dante Whitner is not a player on this team, so he's writing, writing checks that he can't cash because he doesn't play. The other thing that he said is that if Burford makes that block, they win the game. So not only when is it? did he go out of his way and say, oh, well, they had to play against Taylor Swift and the refs and the Chiefs, but this player in particular also is the reason they lost. So, yeah, which one is it? But why are you calling out players that are currently on the team? It just, I don't know. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And this is this is where it gets interesting and kind of funny when people put a lot of stock in what ex-players say as if they're always right and they know everything. It's like, well, maybe we should remember things just like this when we're talking about X players opinions and know that they are in the media. They are trying to garner some clicks and what have you as well. Maybe just maybe they don't always know what exactly is going on, but it, it's definitely foul. He's not even a player on the team and he's kind of an extension of the team. The question that I have grant is Whitner speaking his own opinion, or is Thank this you. something that's come from inside Thank the you. building? That's you definitely what I anticipated know. where I was going. I was waiting to go here. It's like, yeah, Whitner can, you could say Whitner's out of bounds or he was foul, but did he, is this sort of the way people talk privately around the 49ers organization? It might be. Because if you remember before the Super Bowl, Jed York came out, spoke to the media, and he had a question point blank. What do you remember about the last Super Bowl? This was before they lost most. I said, I remember Nick Bosa. Ha 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 ha. It's like, that is the, the 49er culture. It's, yeah, we've lost a few Super Bowls, but if you really know ball, we screwed. And we don't talk about it but it's, you know, sort of losers, but if you bring up the subject, we'll talk about it very quickly. And for Dante Winner to say that that freely, it makes you wonder if he's just like, well, that's what Jed York said like a week ago privately. I mean, why he's not going to get mad if I say it publicly. It's not like I quoted him or anything. It just seems like something you get more of like an attaboy for saying than a, why did you do that? Yeah, I mean, that's that's the thing, right? Like when Matt Mayoko speaks, Matt Mayoko probably not all the time is saying something on behalf of the team, but a lot of people tend to take notice when Matt Mayoko says something. It's like, okay, what's behind this? Because he's pretty plugged in. He works for NBC Bay Area. That's a partner of the 49ers and the Giants. So what does he know? And a lot of the times he does know something and he's kind of just floating things out there. That's the question with Whitner. What does he know? It's not like he's not around the team on a regular basis. I mean, he's on the field and pregames and He's consistently around the team. It's like Joe Montana, if he says something, he's not around the team all the time. But if Jerry Rice said the same thing, you'd be like, well, dude, you're there every single week. You're on the field throwing footballs. What did you hear? Right? Like there's there's different levels to it. And Whitner working for that organization, it's like, man, is this the sentiment? Because if it is, they really haven't learned any lessons over the years. None. Yeah. And it was funny when when Jed York said that like a couple months ago when he made that joke about I remember Nick Bosa getting held. I remember thinking, you know, if and when you guys lose the next Super Bowl coming up, you're going to say the same thing. This is what you do. It's one of the ways you cope 
It's one of the ways you cope with not being champions. I mean, Whitner wasn't a champion either. Was he on the team that blew it to the against the Ravens? Yeah, he might have been. Yeah, yeah, exactly. he absolutely was. Yeah. So this is just generations of cope, and it's disgusting, and it comes from Jed. This is Jed's culture. This is not something that Eddie DeBartolo would have condoned. Talking like this, you know what? Who, who talks like this? Losers. So it's mm. nice that it didn't come directly from the 49ers locker room. It came from Whitner, who used to be in the locker room, but it is loser talk. He even mentioned Taylor Swift. What does that even mean? What? What does that mean? Yeah. What does it even mean? Just try to explain it. No, no, no. Let's take it seriously. What did Whitner mean by that? He's ex- uh, uh, implying that the, the refs and the league wanted the Chiefs to win because Taylor Swift is dating Travis Kelsey. That's what he was implying. It's stupid. And that Taylor Swift in the big game generates more money that they can then disperse across the league. That's that's what he means. Yes, absolutely. That's crazy. I mean, that's crazy. he didn't come out and say it. He just implied it, which shows you that he didn't even want to say it. It's like, yeah, if you actually were to verbalize it, you'd be like, wow, I can't believe I just said that. So you just... Anyway, I see Dante Whitner in, in the uh, press box. I don't want to go crazy because he could go crazy on me. I just felt like this was... Not his finest moment, and it felt like shilling, shilling for a well, team. One thing that, yeah, one thing that we do know, Grant, is the comment about Burford. That was a sentiment in the locker room because Feliciano voiced that sentiment publicly on Twitter and then apologized for it. So that that thought in particular is something that a 49er player or players have absolutely thought that if Burford doesn't miss his block. They win the game, and there are probably players that put that game on him because of that blown assignment or situation. So we know that he's voicing an opinion that certainly is true, at least in some segment of the locker room. So the question becomes, is the other portion true, or is that just fodder that he's made up? I don't know. I'm not going to say that this is for sure what the team thinks, but man, it's not a good look. It's definitely not a good look because it's very close to the organization. When a, when a game comes down to the final play, it's that close. You could go back to dozens of plays and say if this one had gone differently, right? So it just seems like, again, Whitner's going along with the team narrative. Like, uh, it's Wilkes' fault. It's, it's Burford's fault. It's the ref's fault. It's like all the people who don't matter. Well, what about Christian McCaffrey fumbling in field goal range? Do you have the balls to call out Christian McCaffrey? Or, or I mean, it's easy to, to point the finger at Spencer Burford. What's, what's, I mean, who the hell is Spencer Burford? But you're going to say something about Christian McCaffrey? No. I think that was a bigger mess up than Burford's. Two guys rushing at Burford. He had to pick one. And, and, and Whitner has the gall to say he picked the wrong one. Okay. Now, now, now criticize Christian McCaffrey for fumbling. I'd love to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not going to happen. Oh, criticize Kyle, Kyle Shanahan. One time. Do that. That would be so courageous. At, while working at NBC? Wow, that would be cool. Yeah, it's Dude, not say happen. something that isn't completely the company line. That'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, feel. and the other thing, too, is the 49ers bringing back Feliciano. I mean, they're saying that regardless, I mean, they. I'm sure it's been worked out, but, but they're okay with those comments being made. You know, what's interesting is a couple of weeks before the playoff started, there was an interview. I encourage people to go check it out with Richard Mendenhall and Ryan Clark and all those guys. And he talked about how hurt he was over feeling like he was the scapegoat and the reason that they lost a Super Bowl because of a fumble that he had. And there was a comment that Ryan Clark didn't even remember making, I guess, shortly after that, that was kind of a throwaway comment, but it was something that Mendenhall had held on to for all these years and finally was getting it off his chest when talking to Ryan Clark on that show. And it, it like put him in a tailspin in his life, put him in a really, really bad spot. You got to imagine mm-hmm. what, what is, what is Burford going, going to go through it? What is he? 23, 24 years old. Mm-hmm. And, and he's being blamed for the whole Super Bowl one play. Yeah. yeah. If he, if he, inter- if he truly internalizes that and holds that, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if he'll ever be any serviceable player in this league. 
Not sure. You point the finger at Burford. What about Debo Samuel couldn't get open to save his life? What about George Kittle said, hi, George, when a fumble was bouncing around at his ankles and he had two catches? Like, it's just so not, it's easy to point the finger at Steve Wilkes and Spencer Burford. It's the easiest thing in the world. 